Okay. Um, so the first uh, matter is to approve Susan's minutes from January 16th. Anybody have anything to add or? I move we, I move we approve. Uh, second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. great. So the center school, um, uh, it, if you saw um, Chris Larrabee's article in the Gazette this morning, it was a pretty good summary of the discussion the other night with some aspects of it removed. <laughs> but um, I realized I was uh, a little bit, um, I contradicted myself a bit during that meeting because I started out by saying, of course, that I was there on my own, that the committee had not discussed the center school for several years. Um, too, I think. Was and it a regular then, select board meeting? That it, it was, was a regular to... select board meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Alan. Hello. Um, you've missed the approval of the minutes. That's uh, okay. I approve. But, um, <laughs> but ended up um, uh, offering to provide some suggestions about next steps. Um, and I did say, and this was the part that was really on my behalf, that I uh, think that the town should be considering offering the building for sale, that the suggestion of a long-term lease with a million and a half or more of basic renovation costs probably was, may have been an obstacle um, too high. Um, Judy, is there anything else we should say about that? Well, the other thing that got left out of the article was that my comments about housing were based on a very broad brush feasibility study that George Dole has done for Jones Witt, George Dole of Jones Whitsitt had done for the visioning committee that found that housing was the best use of the property. And one reason for that was that the accessibility requirements are lower or would be for a small number of units. And so he thought it would be feasible for either um, too, too large or four small apartments or maybe a, units, I should say. Um, I think that was it, but anyway. And then I did also point out that I thought that there would be a lot of housing grants available, so. Um, I reread the visioning committee's report this morning and I was, I had read it when it was issued, but I, I was really impressed with it. Um, it's very thorough and thoughtful and um, I'm. And didn't you get the impression that the select board hadn't read it recently? I was about to say I'm quite certain that none of the select board members, including <laughs> the one who was on the, the only one was on the select board when that report was issued, have read it. Um, particularly since that one insisted it, with me pushing back at her that we had a very thorough analysis of the expenses. Um, sorry, this is Taylor. Sorry, Taylor. <laughs> Oh, that was Taylor. <laughs> Taylor's tale, actually. Um, and it's not thorough at all. It's a two paragraph memo from George Dole saying, you know, we think it would probably cost about a million four. There are no details in it. So um, I'm, I think at least, I think at least the two who are at the meeting will read it before the next discussion. Um, so where should we start? Um, I guess I should start by um, just verifying that we're all in favor of finding a solution that would retain the building and retain it in as uh, its exterior, at least in a state as close to its um, historic, its original state as possible. Um, is, is that still the case? For me, yes. I suppose so. I'm not entirely convinced, but convinced enough to go along with it, so. Uh, and why is that, Alan? I'm not sure how much the building is worth, really, as a, even as a historic item. 
it may be worth preserving that, and I suspect it is for the water purposes in mind, but I, it's hard to see anybody wanting to either buy or lease the property anytime in the future, considering the amount of work that has to be done on that place. And the roof and the mold remediation, the ADA uh, issues, uh, it's hard to see anybody going for it in a town like this. Um, but we'll try it, um, see what happens. One other comment that was made at the meeting was that Brian commented that when it was advertised to be available, several people did come to look at it. And he was under the impression that they had been interested to purchase rather than lease. Hmm. So I think that was where he was coming down. Um, anybody else want to add point of view? I think it's a try. What's to lose to try for trying? Yeah. Yeah, that's my feeling. I, it's worth a try. I don't expect much success, but it's worth a try. It would be the last extant school building other than the Waitley Elementary School, since I no longer count the small one that was the used bookstore and is now the print shop or whatever it is. There's hardly anything. That remains the blue that, school. Why don't why don't you the blue count school? There's the blue yeah, school. Yeah, why don't you count the uh Barbara Smith bookstore? It's Bar it looks essentially the same. Barbara Smith's bookstore. The used bookstore that you're talking about. Down the antiquarian. Uh the, the one antiquarian. that uh well the slate roof was taken off. We tried to <laughs> convince them not to do that. That made me yeah, sad. But... Still, it's still a book. You're right. I'm being dramatic. I'm being dramatic. It's it's so much more remarkable as a building than the others. Um, I was looking again at the list of uh, possible grant sources, and this morning, and wondering, um, one of the things that the committee talked about. Judy, are you within earshot? Yes. I'm sorry. I just turned the light on. No, that's okay. I just. Was, um, was the possibility of the town raising some money before offering it for sale. And one of the one of the opportunities could be a green communities grant, which requires, remember we had nearly 200,000 for, or sorry, we had about 130,000 for um, the town hall from that source and the school, the, and the school had had money before and the current grant, which I looked up this morning is for sort of energy efficiency moves on all municipal buildings, which was given granted last July. Um, I don't think it can be used at town offices because that's not included in the green communities inventory. Yeah, okay. I don't know about that. It says it's for municipal buildings and it was granted last July. Why is that yes. relevant? Um, so well, I don't know. It's interesting that if you think about it, the, the green communities, in order to be eligible for a green communities grant, you had to do an inventory of your existing energy usage. And that was done before we bought the town offices. And no one's so, updated it, is your point. Well, you can't. Or you, mean, can't. I or you can't. I don't think you, you can. I, I'm not aware that you can. I, so. Um, town offices is not eligible, but the center school is, which is, yeah. is one of Judy, the are you, of, are you saying that that the green communities grant requires an inventory of what of current uses? It it was structured in a way that the, you you were supposed to be able to measure the improvement in your energy use, so you had to have a a base point. For the town, for the town build, for what? For municipal yeah, buildings. It's, it's oh, oh, for municipal. Right. It's yep. it's for municipal buildings only. Yeah, it was a very well. Judy and Brian did the application. It was very the one for town hall it was very technical. Um, uh, and the reason I'm bringing but, it up is that it occurred to me 
that a possible option would be to address some of the infrastructure needs of the building with a grant from the state that requires no match before putting it out to bid again. Um, understanding that there may be other municipal building energy needs that would get in front of that. Um, I, I had no idea, but it, it seemed to, uh, going back and back to the no match required, <laughs> you know, it, it's, I, I am thinking that we might at least want to raise that as a possibility. I don't know if anyone else will think of that otherwise. I don't think so. I was going to suggest something on the same order for that, uh, that housing production grant email from the state that I think you all got a copy of today. Mm -hmm. um, I sent it. Yeah, I got that. I sent it to the housing committee people, but it's intended to help the town get going, figuring out how you start to use a municipal owned building for housing. And one of the things that the housing committee is, is stymied by is the amount of work it takes to organize something like that. So, that's a similar kind of thing that the town might apply for prior to, or perhaps while putting it up for sale. Yeah, I think I think it makes sense to try and do some of that is where there's no match required. So maybe we should um, also just circle back and remind everybody, I, I sent out some documentation about this uh, last week, I believe that, um, the lot is a non-conforming lot, meaning if that building were removed, it's unlikely that any other building could be uh, put on that lot. Um, we changed our bylaws in 2019 to allow the historical commission to deem a building um, significant enough to uh, allow adaptive reuse, in other words, to, to bypass that uh, restriction that the non-conforming lot um, imposes. And, and we did that, um, but there are, and beyond that, the only restriction on uses, and I, I'm hesitating because I'm, I'm actually not convinced that it's our prerogative to be too prescriptive about uses X versus Y, um, but I can be talked out of that. Um, the only limitation that I'm aware of is that embedded in that is that um, although a cafe or some kind of restaurant could be put into it hypothetically, that no serving of alcohol or cannabis is allowed. I don't remember why that's in there. Judy, do you? Is it, is it serving or or sales? I think it, I think the intent was to not be yeah. retail. You think it's so? We should look at that and see what it really is. That it might see what is restricted. Is that? Well, I've got the bylaws here. If you give me a minute, um, you may be right. Well, that was the intent. What it says doesn't always. Right. Planning board doesn't have any more staff than. The, Historical Commission does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Uh, I attached it to the memo that I sent to the to the email that I sent you all last week. Um, which isn't to say we can find it. Yeah, here it is. Well, it's not in the zoning bylaw. I think it might be in the. You think it might be where? In the in the table of use. I don't. Oh, know. Why do Why do we need to know now? Anyway, we don't need to know. Wow, we don't could need I, to know. Could I ask a question? Um, yeah. Donna, you You were asking if our committee commission is in favor of finding a solution for the property that maintains its, have we agreed that we are in favor of that? It, it sounded like there was a little bit of waffling. I'm trying to think of what to put in the minutes here. Am I, are we saying that? 
Well, uh, Alan, <laughs> I, I'm not sure how to characterize Alan's. We're in favor of trying to find a solution. Trying to find a recommendation that would help save or process for helping save, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think it's worth trying to save the buildings. I'm, I'm happy to go along with what we decide. Um, uh, Allison, what is your point of view? Uh, I, I I agree it's worth trying. I, I feel like uh, it, it seems very possible that there might be solutions that do not involve, that, that involve compromising that character somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there are well, any solutions, you know. Well, if there is a use that involves um, cert certain functions would require accessibility. So at a minimum, there would have to be something like the addition that was put on the town right. back of the town hall, which certainly- Or, or regrading, the, regrading of the site. Well, regrading, yeah. regrading would, in my view, since I live on basically the same hill, do a huge amount to address the water damage in the basement problem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Um, Do you? I mean, I guess, I okay. guess I should say that what the other perhaps non-historical objection that I raised, and this was all because um, of the initial response from one select board member saying, well, we could always demolish it and make a park, is that demolishing a building of that size is environmentally irresponsible. It means that you are putting many, many tons of concrete and glass and slate and wiring and <laughs> plumb, you know, pipes into the landfill. <laughs> That's one of the reasons we were so pleased that the town, that relatively little was tossed when we renovated Town Hall. But of course, that was different. We were saving the interior as much as we could as well. Um, do you want the allowed uses for the building under the zoning? Yeah. Retail stores, no greater than 2,000 square feet of floor space, except those primarily selling alcoholic beverages, marijuana products, firearms, or vape products. Business or professional offices, eat-in restaurants, artisan studios, or residential uses within the existing building all within the existing building footprint. So we permit eat in, but not take out. Well, I think, I think it would be, I don't think it's meant to preclude take out from an eat in restaurant. Right, right, but it couldn't be. A liquor yeah. store. Yeah, it couldn't one. be a drive, it couldn't be a drive through. No Dunkin' Donuts then. Haydenville took care of that for us. I think the site <laughs> takes care of that for you pretty well. I was going to say, and 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 um, thinking about what it would be like to drive down onto Christian Lane. <laughs> yeah. You know, only last week I watched um, a tow truck pull an entire car that had driven down into the dingle. Oh yeah, I saw that. Well, I mean, I, you saw the car. I, I, I saw. It was. Saw it, was of the it was really in the dingle. <laughs> Mm. Um, is that the rollover on there was an article about a rollover on no it wasn't a rollover yeah. what, what i have heard from our highway department secondhand is that the driver was following his gps <laughs> i'm trying to get to where that it would take <laughs> i don't know allison's Yankee house Sandal. yeah yeah um okay seriously <laughs> so uh I um, I'm assuming, I assume that we will want to recommend some version of a preservation restriction to be put on the building. And I've looked this morning at uh, the, the restriction we had to sign for the town hall rest, uh, renovation, which is pretty strict. Um, I've written to the historical uh, historic preservation listserv to ask for examples 
that other towns have used in similar situations. Judy, have you seen my note come through on that? No, but I, I frequently don't get the first note, just responses. I don't know why that is. But well, no, it's I funny. Seen. I never get copies of my own posts on that thing, <laughs> so I don't know when they're posted. But, but you know, maybe, but maybe it could be that it hasn't been posted yet. Mass Historical Commission has templates, which would probably right. be the better thing. So you, right. you just want to ask for the simplest template they have. Right. Well, Jennifer would get my note, and she often responds on her own. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I am assuming we want something quite simple. Um, I don't think we need to go to that any other than saying restriction. I don't think we need to do any more on that at this point. In terms of writing, in terms of letting the select board what we think, know what we think? Is that what you mean? Yeah. I mean, other than saying we think there should be a restriction, I don't think they will want to go into that level of detail right now. And make it clear that, I mean, we've written two letters already that do this. So it's just a matter of yeah. pulling no, the Brian's same very good about paragraph that. out. But um, he identifies that, the options that we'd be recommending a preservation restriction only on the exterior that makes me a little sad but i think it's i think myself that to get as many units usable units in the building as possible might require gutting it it's such it's so oddly conformed um given some of the issues that i understand it from the building you know, of the building itself it kind of needs to be gutted wasn't there you know concerns with mold and yeah, yeah there were the police department moved them for a reason and... yeah well and there's also an enormous and quite beautiful attic that has windows mm -hmm. um that could be if the floors were structured differently some of that could be captured, I think, um, not the way it is right now. So, an uh, okay. So, how um, how I, I guess I what I said at the select board meeting the other night is that it might take us about six weeks to get back to them, thinking that we might need to meet twice on this subject, because I think we ought all to see and, and I mean, we ought to discuss anything before we submit it. Um, just do other folks agree with that? I think yeah, so. If, yeah. if the rest of you haven't had a chance to read the Visioning Committee report, I can recommend it. Um, it's. Are you it's, talking about crafting the preservation restriction or the, the recommendation? The latter. Yeah. The latter. Yeah, I don't know that we're going to reinvent the wheel any better than the. You know, one thing to the grants are almost all the preservation grants will require secretary standards and most of them a preservation restriction anyway. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and some of those, especially the the tax credits are, are very lucrative. So um, right. But right. there's a lot of incentive or there's maybe another way to put it is there's not as much punishment as you might think in having a preservation restriction. So I think it would essentially pay for itself. Could. I think so. I think so too. I mean, it can it can uh, frighten some uh, possible investors off. I I also think I'm not very informed about this, but having gone and I think Alan, you and I were together at one, having gone around the time we were working on the town hall to a series of meetings and one statewide meeting mm -hmm. about saving buildings. Yeah. Um, I had the impression that the towns that have been successful have just done a whole lot of groundwork, reaching out to developers, bringing them in, asking their advice. I mean, a lot more, you know, that it's more than just putting an ad in the newspaper. Um, and I partly, I think, because this lease focused RFP was issued during the pandemic, 
or I suppose just after it. I don't think we really did any of that. Um, so, and and during a real estate <laughs> spike too, which made it an odd time. Right. 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 <clears throat> Okay, so um, I think uh, I think what we're agreeing to do is to continue our conversation a month from now. Um, I will follow up some of these matters. Uh, any, is anybody, uh, Judy, would you be willing to flesh out a little bit the grant possibility okay. options? I know that you've, I know that all the work to identify them was yours yeah. three years ago. Um, because again, I think the newer members of the select board are were quite positive and interested and we, I think we have to do some education, bring them along. So, okay, good. Um, so I'm going to, now we're going to turn to, did everybody get uh, from Judy, I think, the library's revised and updated um, application for CPA funding? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me figure out which device I can use to write to Bob Smith. I got you. I'm here. You're here. You mean yeah, you've been I'm listening here. to us blather no, just, on? <laughs> just, just, sat, just sat down. Okay. Okay. So um, uh, everyone has seen your revised material, Bob. And um, I, I, I should say that about 10 days ago, Bob Klinger, who's been working with Bob Smith and the other trustees, um, invited me to join the conversation uh, with the uh, Cooper, the um, um, Mason, they've been consulting and we had what I thought was a very thorough review, um, like 30, 40 minutes in length of the of the front, looking at every corner, talking about things like, should we, you know, sh the extent of the uh, proposed work. Um, after that, uh, I wrote, to the Historic Preservation Listserv to ask if anybody had any opinions about the material that the Mason proposed using. You know, it's harder to, it's harder to get um, very firm historic preservation ideas on relatively recent buildings um, than it is on 200 and 300 year old buildings. But um, I, I was encouraged in that uh, I received nothing negative, whereas, so much of what is on that list, list service sort of immediate wave of you don't want to do that, you don't want to do that when people write in. Um, in fact, the only response was from one fellow who wanted to um, be considered for the work and um, it was in Braintree, I think. Um, I did not respond to him. And Judy, do you want to talk about your exchange with George Dole? Well, uh, at the last meeting, I volunteered to contact George and it took him a while to get back, but he essentially wrote that um, he had, he never worked with this material, but he'd researched it. And it looked to him to be a very good thing and he didn't see any problem with, with, um, with it relative to the secretary's standards. Um, so so um, other folks, questions about the application, questions for Bob or discussion? I want to thank them for all the work they've been doing. Did I? Just in, uh, in, in yeah. case you, you wanted to know about the why we needed the request from um, Blake Gorey, there are three rails in the very center of the steps. Um, two of which are drilled through the concrete into the ground. And the one in the center is bolted to the concrete and that has created issues right where it's bolted. So it was Rich's um, considered opinion to get rid of that middle one and replace it with the same kind of structure, 
drilled through the top and drilled into the basically what is the sidewalk as opposed to the first step. And if you just happen to go by the library and look at it, you can see that it needs to be done. And um, Blake gave us the estimate to um, fabricate the new rail to match the other two and to put it correctly the way it's supposed to be. We figured if we were going to do it, we should do it right. It's also, the old one is also not as long yes. as the two newer ones. and. Um, apparently not as easy to navigate. I mean, it, it's there for handicapped accessibility and it's, you have to sort of reach <laughs> to get to it, which doesn't seem like a good plan. Um, any other questions or? I guess my only question is how long will the handicap ramp be inaccessible while this is going on? And does that pose issues for what we, you know, what would need to be done for accessibility? Well, um, we're going, indeed, uh, we're going to have to remove part of the handicap ramp, lift it up off of the top um, step of the, um, the front. And um, I'm waiting to meet with Mark Szymanski at eight o'clock on Wednesday morning to discuss that. Um, if we have to close for a few days, then that's what we're going to do um, because we want to get it done. It has to be done you know, when the weather is in our favor, it's got to be dry, it's got to be warm. Um, first, the, there's going to be a lot, some work done, and then he uses a vinegar solution as opposed to a chlorine solution to clean the concrete. And he says that there's, Rich Cooper said that there's no way you should get rid of what's there because you cannot replicate that kind of concrete pour in the 21st century. That just simply isn't there. The quality simply isn't there. And he says what you have is in excellent condition, but it needs a little bit of work and a protective coating. So if we have to close, Susan, we're going to we'll, we'll close. But it again, it depends on Rich's schedule when it's going to be. You know, if if can he do it on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? So we only had to close on a Saturday. I don't know, but that'll all be sort of up in the air um, based on when these people can come and do the work. Sure. Okay, thank you. And, and given that he said that the work would take several days, you wouldn't necessarily have to close. You might have to announce that you would not be fully accessible for mm -hmm. a day or two. I mean, I, I don't right. mean to be cavalier because it's great that you're now accessible, but you weren't accessible at all <laughs> you Correct. Know, in the interior Correct. And so recently. So, it's you know, just, when, yeah, when you do work, okay. you have to do work. Um, so, um, the other thing that um, I overheard and uh, that pleased me was that some of your fellow trustees and perhaps you were one of them, Bob, were talking about how you'll need to be more mindful about the kind of snow removal, um, make sure you're not using corrosive material. And right. I certainly know Keith has changed years ago on a, you know, on a lot of his work for the highways to use yeah. Not, the old, not the old road salts that destroyed everything. It's, right. still, not, it's still not great. <laughs> you know? we've, we've, we've already changed uh, from sodium, what is it, sodium chloride to magnesium chloride. The, the one that is pet friendly, um, we already changed this winter to that. Um, and then we will, um, we have other ideas. We, I mean, we're even exploring the idea of those um, heated mats. Um, but that's, you know, we, we have electrical work that needs to get done too. And in order to do the heated mats, we would have to do that. You have to um, up the amps. Yeah. Yeah. We, well, if you, there's one plug in the office of the director, one plug, because all Ina Kane needed was a light above her typewriter. Right. Not so these days. Um, any other questions or discussion? Uh, so, so, oh, Alan, sorry, was that, are you stretching or raising your <laughs> Well, it's, it, it all seems reasonable to me. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I uh, agree with Judy that I appreciate the extra time that um, you and your colleagues have put into this, Bob. So I would like to, um, I will move that we recommend um, to the CPC a grant for this uh, restoration of the library. Um, may I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. 
any further discussion? Okay, so uh, all in favor. Aye. Thank you all. Um, Bob, you'll have to deal with the CPC next month. I've and already, I've you've already got that on your calendar. In Alan, clued, it, okay. clued in Alan and sent him the stuff and um, I will definitely um, figure out when that meeting is. Yeah, okay, good, okay. good. Thank, Thank you all you. very much. Appreciate Thank you for being patient. Thanks, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So on to our, uh, Judy reminded us that although it's been months now <laughs> since we endorsed Quanquan's application for CPA funding that we hadn't yet made any recommendations to the CPC for um, any conditions that we uh, think would make sense from an historic preservation point of view. I, I think you all know that the, the final agreement with the church, um, I think we've circulated that actually, included both a right of first refusal for the town on the property and a 20 year restriction that says that if the windows that are restored um, are not maintained properly, according to historic preservation standards in that 20 year period, that the grant would have to be returned no matter who owned the property at that time. Um, so the church is um, about to uh, finalize a deed restriction. Um, and the other requirements in that are that you have to put up a little sign saying that it is for CPA, it is funded by the CPA, which the church has done. And one that Judy is very aware of, which is that you can't get reimbursed till that little deed restriction is put on. So at least for the church, that's what we recommended. Um, so I, Allison, I'm assuming you want to listen and not, not comment on this in particular, but, but um, what about um, what would we rec would we recommend the same menu of restrictions if a grant were made to Quant Quant, or would there be some variant? I think that's probably the way to approach this. My suggestion would be not to include the right of first refusal, but to use a preservation restriction instead. And I am not sure whether this ought to be a permanent one or a um, 30 year one, but I think in this case, the with the church, the windows were an integral part of this bigger structure and the preservation restriction on the bigger structure was um, a cost that the church would have had to bear that was way out of line with the amount of money in the grant. Um, and in this case also, and, and the other thing is that the building had some utility perhaps for the town in the future if in fact the church didn't want it. So there's some reasonable sense that the right of first refusal might actually be exercised. Um, I think in this case, the silo is an integral entity on its own. You can argue whether it ought to be one of the three or all three that are preserved, but I think since you're just funding the one, then, then the one. Um, I don't think that the town has any desire to own a silo per se. Um, I also don't think that people would like to take it off tax records with a right of first refusal. So, and I don't think the preservation restriction would be all that hard to draft because you would really just be dealing with the exterior and we, you wouldn't have to worry about access once a year or some of the other stuff that often gets into preservation restrictions. Uh, um, I think the other um, complication about suggesting a right of first refusal is that Quan Quan is now one entity with a very large footprint and multiple buildings and possible additional build and it's it, it, it's really not analogous to a single building on a small piece of property. Um, 
you said 30 years were you literally suggesting a longer this is just we're just talking about a recommendation obviously it's not our decision but or was that a, no, think, is that a slip i think the options are whether you do a, a 30 year one which is just recorded with a deed or a permanent one but why would you make it 30 years when the window restriction was 20 because that's the longest you can do i think that's the longest you can do a deed restriction without having it be permanent through MHC. I thought Stuart Saginaw told us, that I, I thought we got the 20 from Stuart Saginaw. I think it was sort of a rough, I think it was more a sense of the life of a window or something. No, I'm, I'm quite sure you can. No, no, it. it wasn't. It was not. I mean, well, I was on that phone conversation. It was not about windows. No, um, I'm quite sure you can do 30, but. Uh, Susan Allen. Judy very, you know, did a great job articulating. There was something that just didn't feel right to me about having the deed restriction. I couldn't put my finger on what it was. It just didn't feel applicable in this. So I agree with what Judy has said. I'm absolutely fine with the preservation restriction. I'm not sure. Um, 20 versus 30 kind of depends on what the standard is. Well, the but the preservation restriction would have to be a deed restriction. Because I, I'm sorry, no, I, when I said deed restriction, I meant right. You meant right of first refusal. refusal. Okay, okay, fine. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. It's been a long day. Okay, fine. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I don't feel strongly about 20 versus 30, but. I mean, my guess is this is designed, this work is designed to last a lot longer than 30 years anyway, but. Yeah, I, 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 um, I think having set a standard for 20 years, I'd be hard. Uh, I'm not positive about having us get into 20 versus 30 versus 10 versus 50. 20 feels pretty good to me. <laughs> you know, um, that's not a technical response. It's. I think um, to me is it's easier to change out the windows. So we needed to make sure to, you know, to make those kinds of changes. The types of changes that, or work that Quant Quant wants to do is not work that would be undone easily. So that's why I'm less concerned with the term of it because from a practical standpoint, as long as the work is still in good shape, I can't imagine how it would be undone. Yeah, I mean, apart from demolishing the silo, which seems unlikely. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, I suppose some fool could buy the property and decide that the historic beauty of it was irrelevant. You know, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, as has happened in many communities, right? Allison, would you like to say anything? No, I, I you know, it seems unlikely, but I, you know, if the property went up for sale, and I, I don't see that happening in the next twenty years. You know, someone could buy it and put a solar panels here and take down the bar. I don't know. You know, I don't know what. Right. Maybe we're quibbling. Um, if I, we, in if that we case, ask, would, would it make any sense to ask them to only save the silos while they leveled all the other buildings? I it, that doesn't. No. Right. No. Is. Is maybe there's no real distinction between a preservation restriction for 20 years and a requirement that if it's not preserved, you have to pay back the money because the punishment for taking it down and violating the restriction would be pay back the money anyway, basically. Right, and, and the agreement that the church has signed is not actually a preservation restriction. It's a payback. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I, uh, so maybe, I a pay, maybe just, just instituting a payback has the same effect. 
Right. I, I mean, I'm in favor of recommending a payback uh, condition because the notion of making grants with public money to private entities is brand new, not universally favored. Um, the church grant was considered at a special town meeting, so it you know it didn't get the full hundred plus people <laughs> who come to a town meeting, and I, I think it serves the town well to demonstrate some that we uh, put some protection. And, and I say that, Allison, you know, with no fear whatsoever <laughs> that Quan Quan is going to do it. I mean, there is certainly no evidence that Quan Quan is not preservation minded. I mean, that would be, you know, I'm turning red. That's yeah, the only thing I can see uh, taking down that silo yeah. is, is a tornado, you know? Right, right. Right, and actually, that's a very interesting question. Um, act of, some act of God. Hmm. But that's so true. Conway, Conway Church had to pay back CPA money after the tornado. Oh, did they? Yeah. Wow. Damage their work. Right. Oh, but, really? um, it's not. Ironically, it's not there was no legal requirement. <laughs> They just, the CPA there, CPC just badgered them into it, I think. Wow. Is that, it's just Goshen, they, it's Goshen that has just, enough. yeah. It's Goshen that has finally rebuilt their tornado damaged church, isn't it? Or is no, that- Conway. Conway. Oh, it is Conway, it is Conway. Yeah. Um, okay, would someone like to make a recommendation? We're going to recommend. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me let me approach this differently. Are, do we are we unanimous in our in in agreeing with Judy that imposing a right of first refusal does not make sense in this instance? Yes. yes. Okay. Are we? I also don't want to make them pay back the money if it's destroyed by an act of God, <laughs> tornado, et cetera. Somehow that feels very wrong to me. The Chinese weather balloon strike. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an act of God? Well, act of war, I, you know. Ah. Um, so are you suggesting that we recommend a similar protection to the one that was imposed on the church with an exception for like a phrase that didn't refer to God? Yeah. <laughs> no. Nature. For, for yeah. na severe maybe, nature. Maybe go at it the other way. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, um, not preserve something about it, unless you know payback if, if it's destroyed by man-made efforts or something like that rather than well, trying beyond to control of the uh, things like that there probably is the right phrase out there somewhere it's something like they, they have to pay back if the silo were destroyed through neglect or intention you know, it's something, right? Yeah, something like that. I suspect Quan Quan's lawyer can come up with an appropriate phrase. This, those phrases are probably built into all kinds of agreements. I just don't know them by heart. Right, right, exactly. When exactly. I go down for dinner, I'll ask Fred. Yeah. Uh, I would be perfectly happy to have an email that tells it <laughs> to the meeting that. <laughs> Um, I constitute violating the open meeting laws if I just send to you the, the wording that he suggests. I, I don't know. Do we think we're all that we are all in agreement that that's what we're talking about? Payback in the case of neglect or intentional <laughs> damage to the silo? 
So yeah, that's by, right. by the by the owners. You're probably right. You probably can't ask Fred. I'm reading, but we're, but we're not drafting an agreement. Yeah, tell we're, me if this we're... helps you. I'm reading. I'm reading a, from just a contract one of my clients has about, uh, how, you know, what they're not responsible for, and it says, um, you should not be held liable due to any of the following causes to the extent beyond its reasonable control: acts of God, adverse weather, natural catastrophes. Accidents, riots, war, terrorist acts, invasions, epidemics. There's a whole list. So you could get really deep into this. I'm 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 ready, quite happy with adverse weather or intentional <laughs> damage or neglect. Nat natural <laughs> catastrophe. Natural catastrophe. Yeah, good. I like that. It's mm -hmm. not so much damage. It's it's uh or terrorist the secretary standards. Yeah, it's probably you know, putting a plastic state. roof on wouldn't mm -hmm. wouldn't mm -hmm. wouldn't be damaged, but right. Well, the right. damaged preservation stuff, but not damage right. in the typical and, sense. And we've and we had um, very specific. We have very specific agreement. Uh, or wording about the Secretary of Interior standards in the agreement that the church has signed, so we can lift that. But add the. I just googled alternative. You guys are going to check out this. I just googled alternatives for act of God, and my favorite one is a supernatural event. <laughs> well, that's a, that means something different, though. Exactly. I'm like, what? Well, and we uh, have that's, and that's poltergeist, Susan. We have history in Waitley. We have the phone ghost. Right. Right. You know, well, so I don't I, think, I, I don't, I don't think we want to open that up. No, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I really think that a, the lawyers can deal with of this. Course they can. The of course, of okay. course they can. Of course they can. So I'm just going to write no. down here that you're going to look into the phrasing for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, if that's okay. Um, our, our, despite the fact that we're a little all over the place, I think we have the general gist of the thing. Um, are you, uh, I think we could do two things. Um, one is I could draft something up and run past you all, remembering all that we're doing is sending our recommendation to the CPC. We can't actually impose anything. Or you could just say to me, Donna, just send a note to Alan Sanderson and say we had this discussion. I, I'm happy either way. You do want to include the acknowledgement sign or yeah okay i think so yeah that, that was the cpc requirement not a historical oh, I see. Okay. yes yes that's true that's true sorry sorry uh, yes and I, actually um it, judy i didn't tell you this but now that we're talking about it that the templates that i started from that uh Stuart sagner's organization produ um uh produced um recommended a permanent sign and Brian agreed with my recommendation that that seemed a little much, given the it's interesting you asked given the window it's... work in purport in relationship to the entire church. <laughs> yeah, um, I think the church will put a, a permanent sign inside, mm -hmm. but it didn't seem appropriate outside. Uh huh. Somehow. Um. Okay. Are we all right? Have we beat that to death? I think so. Okay. Where are we? It is three minutes to six. Um, Alan, I'm going to ask you, what's your pleasure? Would you like a, Would you like to move on to the your, thank you for your document, your criteria for identification of likely archeological sites, or would you, would you, would you like to table that until the March meeting? Mm -hmm. We can table it to March. I've, I've discovered that I, I missed a, a beginning. Why are we doing this kind of thing? Uh, you know, what are the, some of the legal things behind it? And I'm also discovering that as I go along with this thing, historic stuff and prehistoric things are getting mixed up. So I need, I want to separate those a bit. Okay. So you want to change your draft. Yeah, would, okay. Yeah. Right. I want to change the draft and send that right. to a meeting. I don't um, think it would require much, but I would like to make some changes. Okay, thanks. Um, 
has anyone made enough progress in thinking about a possible area submission for North Street that we should talk about this tonight? I read through all of Derricka's property bios. Me too. Not yet, but. Do we want to talk about that now or do we want to defer it until March? Proposal. I propose deferring. Deferring sounds good. Every, that's okay with everyone? Yeah, I, I should say that I think when we talk about it again, I don't want to do this now, but we should also um, discuss whether any of us is in a position to take that project on at this point, or any few of us, <laughs> um, which is a separate issue from whether we think it's a good idea. So why don't we all think about that? Um, I have a tiny bit of other business. Remember we talked about our budget? Oh, yeah. um, I realized that I have used all the stamps I bought a few years ago. So I would like to alert you that I will use some money unless you object to this to buy some historical commission stamps. <laughs> Go for it. Um, I move that we authorize. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of stamps and stamp acts, I listened to that historic mass historic preservation thing about uh, the Re uh, American Revolution 250. Oh, uh, was it? Oh, be done it the other day. And what did you hear? And I don't know how that affects the commission. It may be more the society, but um, there there will be money probably available for us to do preservation projects or educational projects related to the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution. And since uh, we're not in a town where I don't believe there was actually any fighting, but but they did talk for quite a bit about how um, there's a lot of programming being considered that deals with alternative players in the revolution, alternative uh, stories and points of view. So not just young men, going to war, but uh, enslaved people and indigenous people and the role of women during the war and what that meant for their lives here. So I thought that was pretty interesting that they're interested in that kind of thing. So I'll just throw that out to you. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And that the uh, FYI, you probably know that it's, it's sort of beginning with the 250th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party, which will be this December because that was 1773. And they're kind of identifying that as the, the kickoff to the whole the whole shebang. Uh, are you yeah. now, uh, will you, because you registered, will you continue to get information from this group, do you think? You know, I assume so. I think I actually had a click off before the final, final wrap up. I was still, they were still answering questions and I had to go, so. That's but but they have a website and you know you can go on and explore it and um, but the state is and, and because we are Massachusetts, um, the feeling is that we have particularly strong interest in this event because it was began here a lot of the you know uh, politics were centered here and with Massachusetts politicians and in fact uh, Massachusetts sent more soldiers. Uh, to fight in that engage in that war than I think most of the other colonies did, except for maybe a year or two. So Massachusetts is really top of the list for being involved in in that war. Yeah, I'm glad. Thank you for doing that. That's yeah, great. It was interesting. While you're here, um, if any of you are in the greater Boston area, the Concord Museum has redone itself beautifully. And they have just yeah, a I'm wonderful, right. wonderful um, exhibit showing the timeline of the Battle of Lexington and Concord and where the British marched then, where Paul Revere's, it's a map and a timeline and, and it's very difficult to describe, but we sat through it twice. Um, it's a dynamic where it shows 
where the British are marching when, and then there's sort of a tally as, of the, as they call up the militias in Lexington and Concord. So they have like a tally sheet on the scorecard on the side that gives the number of British soldiers involved and then the number of colonists. And it starts off with something like 300 and 30 on one side and 30 on the other. And then- And then the guys from watch, Whaley arrive, right? <laughs> well, you watch as the <laughs> militias do. arrive over the course of the day and, and gradually the colonists total rises way above even after the British have reinforcements. And, and I had no idea, even people way up on the North shore were sending people down. Yeah. You know, it's absolutely fascinating. And it's, it's, I would say it's a worth a, worth a trip, but if you're in that area, I, I would. Right, well, Lexington and Concord obviously is the epicenter of the whole, of the whole beginning of that. And, and they must yeah. be consumed with activities that they're planning for this. I can't even imagine. Um, well, I know that. that um, but but I just want to say one more thing. The, the, this meeting, they were talking that about the, that every, every town, town, even the littlest, tiniest towns, have their own story to tell about the revolution. Because, of course, this was being discussed town by town yeah. in all the town meetings leading up to this. What are we going to do? Where do we stand on this? What's our position? And that can be very different from one town to the other. And that that story lies within the town meeting notes. And I would love to read those. It would be very interesting to do. Well, they have them. They're over, they're over in town offices. You know where they are, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, the, the other thing I should just say that is relevant is that um, the uh, Neil has been, on behalf of the Historical Society has been working with the veterans for what seems like two years to bring all the lists of those people from the town who have served in the military up to date. Um, Larry Ashman has been great. I mean, about every three months I hear Neil say, we got a DD-214. I now know what a DD-214 is, which is the discharge form from the military. Um, and there, uh, the lists are now with uh, somebody who's going to make the plaques and put them on the stones that flank the central. And I think they're hoping for, uh, it's the veterans who are actually doing this. Um, uh, I think they're hoping for Memorial Day, but it's because Derricka, <laughs> being Derricka has got the list of everyone who's, you know, the French and Indian War, Upped it, added a lot of names, corrected a lot of names. Um, there's more of the material. Well, it's all historic, but more of it precedes the world wars than right. right. And what was the original impetus, which was to add those who who served in Vietnam and well, to complete the list of in Vietnam and those who've served since then. It's it's been quite interesting. Well, we could discuss, you know, you were talking about budget last meeting and, and do we need any money to ever do a project and what would that be? And this this may not be it, but it but it 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 seems like somebody in town, and as I say, maybe it's a historical society and it involves programming through that entity. Only if if only because it'll be going on all around us, you know, and, and we shouldn't ignore that this little town which wasn't such a little town in those terms then, you know, was involved in this too. It wasn't Concord or Lexington, but it 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 was involved and had its own opinion. I, I can't wait to find out what that was. Almost had George Washington's armor. Almost. George Washington almost slept here. <laughs> um. Never mind. I'll save it for the next discussion. <laughs> oh, I think you're right. Um, okay, our next meeting, because February is 28 days, would be March 20th at five o'clock. Unless anybody finds that impossible, um, shall we adjourn? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good night. All right. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.